Hello and welcome to episode 18 of the Hollywood Knitter Podcast. My name is Allison and I'll be your host today. I'm recording on Sunday, I should know the date, January 22nd, probably? <laughs> yeah, Sunday, January 22nd, 2016 from my home in very, very rainy Los Angeles today. So how has everyone doing? It's been a while. I haven't talked to you since before Christmas. And I'm already warning you, I'm going to be a little discombobulated today. I've been meaning to do a podcast for weeks and I just haven't done it because I haven't had time alone or the urge to, and I had it today, but I haven't totally prepared for everything. So some of this is going to be off the cuff, but I needed to basically catch up <laughs> so that I can then prep for the next podcast so it doesn't become overwhelming. And because it's very rainy and gray and windy in Los Angeles today, which is awesome because we need the rain. I have changed where I'm recording. I'm actually sitting on the floor in a corner of my living room where I have the, the, the curtains open to let in as much natural light as possible. And I felt that this was sort of the best location and you had some stuff in the background. This is our empty jellyfish tank. This was my present from Christmas. Not this past year, but the year before, and we still don't have a jellyfish. But, so it goes. And then you'll see some games and my little uterus I knit a few years ago, which is very appropriate right now. So, that's what's behind me. That's why the difference is. And I have a lot to talk about in any way, so I want to get started with that, and we'll go right into it. We'll go right in with whips. So, since I last talked to you, I finished the other part of my Christmas present, which I don't have if a Christmas present, I gotta slow down, <laughs> which was a pair of gloves for, um, for someone and yeah, fingerless gloves. And I finished them. I don't have them to show, but just to kind of mention it. I also finished this hat I'm wearing. It was perfect today. I knit this hat and I, I'm going to refer to my notes because as I refer back to the, my lack of preparation today, um, I did take a few notes. So a few weeks ago, so this was a stash buster slouchy hat by Amanda Schwab and I did this with Sesame Street mini bundle from another crafty girl and I forget which bundle it was but basically these are all colorways from her Sesame Street and she has seven 40 yard skeins in it I think and so I basically did a hat it's really a recipe I didn't have to necessarily pay for it but I tend to be a lazy designer kind of thing. I could have made it up, but it was much easier just to pay someone whose project I'd admired and did it. So very simple hat, sock, weight, kind of you can see my line where I'm switching colors behind. And basically you did alternated two colors, then like five or six rows of the same color alternate. And that's how you kind of dropped it off. And I had this purple in my stash. This was like footlights somebody had given me. And so I used that as my brim because I wanted a solid brim. And yeah, I just made myself a little hat. Just a little, little slouchy beanie like the way I like them. I then, with the, this yarn, because I had a little bit, I had a little bits and bobs. Like these were 40 yard colors and I had bits and bobs left. And I was thinking about putting them in my fingering linen stitch blanket. But then I decided I wanted to make a pair of shorty socks out of them. So here's one, here's two. So again, I use um, the purple for heels and toes and that was just a solid color I had. And then I basically knit whatever I had left in that color. That's why they're, they're a little different in terms of it. And I chose four colors over here and well, this is continued from here. So it's kind of like that. And I used all my colors up and I just made some shorty socks. No pattern, just my normal toe up. And then I just did, you know, a few rows at the ankle and bound off. So I really like shorty socks, so I'm excited to have a pair. And I was excited to use this yarn. I love another crafty girl. Sarah is so awesome and her yarns are really cool. And I love Sesame Street, so Sesame Street colorways are awesome. I have one more bundle left and I'll probably leave it in my stash for a while. But I picked this yarn up at SSK last year. So it was awesome. And I think that is all I have for whips. I did want to say that I was working before I go into, before whips, FOs, 
Before I go into my whips, I want to mention that I ended up scrapping the big herringbone cowl by Pearl Soho. It was the, what I was doing with my Erin Waite yarn that I picked up in Ireland, but I just wasn't enjoying it. Like the fabric looked really nice, but the actual knitting of it and the herringbone stitch and the big 15 size needles, I just wasn't liking it. And I was like, life's too short. So I just decided to frog it and I will find a new, a new yarn, a new project for the yarn. So I did that. I have not been working on my sock scrap blanket because this is my plan for the new year and I'll, I'll talk about my new year's kind of things before, but I started another blanket instead. So I'm going to show it to you because I really like how it's looking up. Now I talked about putting my worsted weight scraps together and I thought I was going to do a brioche blanket inspired by West Knits. But instead, I thought that would be too much work, <laughs> the brioche. So I wanted to crochet it and I wanted it to be faster. And so this is what I have. And this is a blanket that I should know. And unfortunately, you're going to have to go to my project notes to find it. I apologize. I didn't write it down. Um, but it is very simple. You can see all of my ends. I'm doing one color across and basically you just do a single crochet and then what this is it's a double crochet in a loop below and it kind of stacks it's a free pattern I think and I sort of have a theme I had a lot of this green yarn I frogged a sweater that I never wore and it was like uh, Barocco something or other so it's carried every four rows so basically I have a I'm gonna hold it this way. Basically I have a green and then I have a grayish and so I have like multiple colors of like random scraps of gray. And then I have a pink or a red so I kind of have like the red pink family together and then I have the blue family together and then I do green again. And so it has some continuity but some randomness and you can kind of see kind of see how that goes. And I'm looking to make a throw size. I can't remember what I cast on. I'm sure I wrote it down somewhere, but I can't even like I can stretch it all the way. So it's going to be about, I don't know, four feet wide maybe. And I was just looking for something smaller when I'm on the couch to sort of just throw over myself and it will fit just fine that way. Just kind of a little extra warmth, but not totally enveloping because all my blankets right now on my couch are too big. Like sometimes I just want a smaller one. So I'll talk more about when I'm going to work on that later when I talk about my goals for this year, roughly. What else do I got going? I have a pair of socks and this is in, this is <laughs> um, just doing a slip stitch pattern, not slip stitch, a alternate ribbing pattern. It's basically knit three, purl one, and then you shift it. So it sort of makes this rippling. And the yarn is Lanix Ex Machina and I think the Berlin colorway. And you can kind of see it there. So it's very dark, very manly. It's for the boyfriend. It's kind of just the pair of socks that I have knit on. Uh, as I said, there is a pattern. I was inspired by somebody to do this particular stitch pattern, though I'm doing it toe up and I can't remember if their pattern is or not. But the stitch pattern is based on a sock, so that is in my project notes. Charity. I This is one of my goals I'll talk about a little bit is charity. So I have cast on and finished with some of my new yarn acquisition, my first pair of boobies. And these are knitted knockers that will be going for knitted knockers. And this is the charity for the Northern California knitting retreat that I'm going to in April. So I am going to commit to doing definitely two, maybe three pairs before I go. Basically with whatever works with the yarn I bought that I'll talk about momentarily. Um, I have one more, one more whip on my needles right now. And this is the Shifting Sands Shawl by Lisa Hansen. No, Lisa Hans. It's not the Shifting Sands. It's the Sand Layer Shawl by Lisa. <laughs> Woohoo! And I'm doing this in teals and grays. It's kind of bunched up on my needles. Yeah, you can see. 
So basically the grays and then you do some slip stitching section and then you go to the other color, a lot of garter stitch and then these fall in between with these slip stitch sections. I like how it's turned out. I like the color combination. The yarn is scrumptious. It's Marigold Gen in the Tealicious colorway and Dye for Yarn and Whispering Shadows is my two yarns. Doo, doo, doo. So I am almost, uh, I'm on the last section right before the border, though the border is pretty long. I've been working on it fairly consistently. I want to finish it up sooner or later. So that's my whips right now. I have more I want to. Oh, and my fingering weight blanket that I haven't worked on in four months. Though I am going to pick it up again. So let's talk real briefly about 2016 and my knitting goals and what I did last year. Just briefly, um, last year I did 34 total projects, which is on par with my previous years. 2015 was 32, 2014 was 36. I do between 30 and 35. And this year that was 13,500 yards, a little more than. So again, pretty on par with what I did, a little more actually. I think the previous year I'd done about 11.5 and before that 11. So I increased it probably by about 15%. Again, a big mix, six hats, two toys, 10 pairs of socks, six scarfs or cowl, three shawls, one pair of mitts, two baby and three sweaters. That's really good. That's the most, almost the most I've done. And then one baby blanket. And what I also do is I do see how many are charity, how many gifts, how many were for me and how many were for my gift box. And this year my charity went way down. I only did two things for charity. 15 were gifts, 13 were for me. I got that selfish knitting going on. And then four were for my gift box that I didn't know who they were going to. So um, for this coming year, did I write my goals? I wrote them somewhere. I'm gonna have to pause because my boyfriend was gone and I was trying to finish this up and I just heard he came home. So I'm gonna pause it and then I'm going to come back and finish and talk about my goals and then show you some yarn acquisitions and talk about what's going on in my life. But first I have to let them come in and shove them upstairs because I can't do this in front of other people. I'm back. Um, I was talking about my goals for next year, 2017. So I found my notebook where I wrote them down. And one of the things is more charity knitting. I have, as I said, didn't do a lot of charity knitting last year and that bothered me. So I've set very specific goals of one item for every two months. So I wanna do at least six for next year, which is much increased over my two. And what I basically said is January through April, they're gonna be knitted knockers. And I think I'm actually gonna get more than two pairs. And then May through October, I'll do mother bears. And then November, December, I'll do hats. So I should get at least two pairs of knitted knockers, three mother bears, and a hat. Very doable, very reasonable, and would make me happy. I also want to work on my long-term break goods. <laughs> so how I'm going to do that is I'm going to alternate because it's really much faster to crochet the worsted weight than it is to do the three inches on the fingering. So I actually ended up doing a foot on the worsted and this month in February, I'm going to do three or four inches on the fingering and then alternate. And so I should pretty much be done with my worsted by the end of the year. And this will push my fingering blanket out another year at least, but I'm okay with that because that's just the way it goes. And if I work on them so much, then I don't have time for other projects. So the fingering weight blanket is still going to happen. I'm still going to work on it, but just not as often so that I can fit in my other blanket because I like them and they're a great way to use up scraps for both. I did worsted DK in that blanket and then fingering in the other one. In my queue, I want to do three sweaters again and I have, I have sweater quantities for the ones that are in my queue. So I want to do at least three, one every four months, which is about on par with what I did last year. So that should be doable, though I haven't cast on for mine for this month or this first quarter. Or yeah, four shawls, so one every three months. And then I wanna do a few Christmas gifts. I was caught a little last minute like I was, 
And so I want to think about a little more earlier in the year and just add those projects to my queue and knit them. And that only really is for my sister, my mom, and probably my niece. I have to think about anybody else and see, but I want to add those projects sooner and knit for Christmas. So those are my 2017 goals. Let's talk now about some stash acquisition that was related to some things I did. One is Stephen West came and talked at a yarn store as part of his current tour for his new book, which is a collection of basically his best patterns. And we went to, my friend Priscilla and I went to Make One Yarn, which is about, well, normally it's about 40 minutes for me, but it took like an hour and a half that night because of traffic. Very cute yarn shop. Um, if it wasn't so far away, I would go. But they were having a pretty decent, we had a like, I don't know, $10 off, but I basically did some yarn acquisition. And so I'm gonna show you. One, you've sort of already seen, my knitted knockers, I finally picked up, one reason I'd never knit knitted knockers is because I didn't have the yarn and stash. And so I found some cotton, it's Cotton Supreme DK in Sea Spray. And it sort of makes kind of a brownish color. And I brought two skeins, I don't know, they're each 230 yards. So we'll see how many knitted knockers I get out of them. I scanned up one and I already started and finished that pair. So those were two of them. The other thing I've been going is I'm trying to get two skeins of sock yarn for shawls. A lot of shawls seem to be two color, minimum of two skeins, though some of Stephen Weff's, which I loved and were ginormous, were like four to five skeins, and I just haven't gotten there. But I wanted to pick up some more kind of combinations, sort of like the sand layers I'm doing right now, and so I picked up these Mad Tosh. Mad Tosh, Grasshopper, and Pelican. So like a bluish gray and a green, and I just thought these really popped well together. And I don't have this color as like a shawl or something in. So I picked up that. And then the last thing I picked up was a new to me dyer, Material Culture Fiber Arts, which is hair and dyed in Claremont, California, which is very close to where the store is. And this is their sock fingering, 75% um, merino to 15% nylon to 10% tensile. And I just really like this kind of speckly green color. I don't know who the socks will be, either me or the boyfriend. Probably the boyfriend is who I was thinking of, but I really like these colors. So I picked up those. And then, I'll drop them. Priscilla gave me a present, and so she gave me Tempted Heavenly Girl Lace Weight in my favorite colors. You'll see a theme. And then Spinning Fates, also. Orange, me. <laughs> So she gifted me with these. So I got plenty of yarn. Now we had Christmas since we left and I didn't get any yarn gifts, which is pretty normal for me, sadly, but I did get some really cool gifts. I got a wireless headphones, like the noise canceling for my travels. And I had asked for that. I also got a really cool little um, printer. Um, it's a tiny little printer that you can bring with you to do little printouts from your phone. And I'm gonna be using that for my travels, um, my international travels, so that I can just print it out and it's actually a sticky back and I can put the picture right into my travel journal. So I can kind of do that way. I can also give pictures to people right there. So that was a little, little cool gift I got. And, oh, I got a new tablet. <laughs> my boyfriend bought me a new Samsung tablet because, yeah, because I need a new tablet. And I also did a lot of food making, which is not usual for me, but I did help make a lot of tamales, a lot of tamales. I ate a lot of tamales over the holidays. And as well as bunuelos, which is sort of this deep fried, doughy Mexican treat. And I am not good at rolling out dough. You're supposed to make it into these flat circles and they, yeah. I did a lot of it, but there was a lot of laughing at all the little holes and little tails and they could just make perfect flat circles and that was really challenging for me but it was fun to do um i also did a lot of health appointments so i had the upcoming vaccinations for my upcoming trip i had my first mammogram and as a result of that i had to go back for my first follow-up thing you know where they did an ultrasound everything apparently is fine very common to get that but it was still kind of annoying and slightly trep I just had a little trepidation but not really but 
anyways, I did all of that. So that was good. I also went and saw my family last weekend and that was a lot of hanging out with my niece who I adore. And so we did a, she's a big cuddler. She likes to be on top of you next to you playing Like she wants you to watch her play games on her tablet. So we did a lot of that where I'm a, I'm currently addicted to a star Wars game on my tablet. And so we played a lot of that where we, she played on hers and I played on mine and we just hung out. And then, um, yeah, I went and saw a movie. I went and saw the rogue one with my nephew. Um, star Wars is wasted on the truly young. He was just like, it was just okay. And I'm like, it was really good. But you know, he's 15. So I don't know if he would tell me anything was really good and unless there was way more violence and shoot him up in it. But it was fun to see the family, though it was cold. I'm not a big fan of the cold. Today's okay because it's, we need the rain, but in general, I'm not a fan of the cold. Ooh, the big thing is I go to India next week. <laughs> so I've started to sort of think in my head what I'm going to bring. Weather is going to be not as warm as I expected. It, I thought it would be in the upper 70s and it's really the lower 70s and a little cool at night. So I'm um, going to be doing some practice packing this week, picking up any other little supplies I need to get. I have... Um, been taking probiotics to try to help avoid some of the deli belly and things like that. So I've just been prepping and I can't wait and I'm going to be going relatively light. I have a travel backpack, which is actually, um, sort of like a soft sided suitcase, but it actually has shoulder straps. So you can wear it. It's an e-bags thing. I actually don't usually travel with it because most of the time I'm doing domestically and wheeled luggage is much easier. But for this, I will break that back out and pack it up and I'm gonna have that in a backpack and that's when I'm traveling. And it's been interesting. We've been on Facebook meeting the other people who are gonna be on the tour and there's people from all over, some from Australia, some from California, Florida, mix of ages and things like that. And so I'm really looking forward to it. It's gonna be very, very exciting. That's another reason I wanted to get this podcast out so that I could get you one before I went to India because I'll be there almost two weeks and I know when I come back, I'm not gonna podcast right away. I don't know if I'm gonna get any yarn. I don't know what I'll find there. I'm not specifically seeking out anything because I'm not sure that they're particularly known for yarn, but I, I'll i see. I know they got a lot of saris. They, they might have the sari silk yarn, maybe. Other than that, I have knockers in April, Maryland maybe in May, and zombie apocalypse. Still debating about Stitches West. It is after I come back and it will kind of be a spur of the moment decision if I go. It might just be like a one day thing. I want to, but I also know I'll want to just stay home after being gone for two weeks. So I'm being realistic to myself. And what else? I think that's kind of everything caught up. As again, I apologize. I feel like I'm just blah, 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 blah. But I wanted to do that and get it out so that I can reorganize my thoughts for the next podcast and my knitting and show you everything. So all of those projects I talked about and everything are on my show notes. So if you did like anything and I didn't say the pattern name because I don't have it memorized, it is linked in my show notes or not my show notes, my project page. So go and check out my rough project page if you're interested in anything and everyone stay safe. I hope everyone's having an awesome 2017 start to their year. And yeah. So that's a wrap from Hollywood where fantasy meets fiber and dreams aren't it. Bye everybody.